This is BBC World News with me, Matthew Emery Waller. Our top stories. Images before and after a strike on Russia's airbase in Crimea. Is it a major boost for Ukraine? Western defence ministers meet in Copenhagen to discuss spending more powerful weapons to Kyiv. We'll have all the latest also in the programme. France battles a zombie fire near Bordeaux as the fourth heat wave of the summer sweeps across the country. 10,000 people have been evacuated from the southwest. America's top diplomat raises the case of the detained Hotel Rwanda hero as he meets President Kagame in Kigali. And the free diver who's just done this, setting a new world record 120 metres down. Hello and welcome to BBC News. We begin in Ukraine where satellite images show the extensive damage to a Russian airbase in occupied Crimea that was hit by a series of explosions on Tuesday. Ukraine has not officially acknowledged that it was responsible for the explosions, but there is growing speculation over its involvement. Russia has blamed an accident at an ammunition store and denied that any planes were destroyed. We'll take a look at these images from the airbase in Crimea. The first shows what the airbase looked like before the explosions, and the second shows that eight warplanes appear to be damaged or destroyed. Several craters are also visible, and a large area has been scorched by fire. Our correspondent Hugo Bacheco is following all the developments from Kiev. The latest there from Rwanda. Now, do stay with us because still to come on the programme, we'll show you this free diver setting a new world record, 120 metres down, 3 minutes, 34 seconds, with just one breath. Welcome back to BBC World News. Now in Ukraine, it is impossible to accurately know how many people have been killed since Russia invaded the country. The challenges in identifying and repatriating soldiers killed on either side means that according to the Ukrainian government, only around 400 fallen fighters have been returned home so far. As Wira Davis reports from eastern Ukraine, when occupied villages are taken back, it's a painfully slow and difficult process for those people whose job it is to recover the dead. Well, let me take you live straight to Copenhagen. Uh, that news conference with the defence ministers uh, has just started, so let's put the microphones up and have a listen. Participants today have committed more than 1.5 billion euros to the table. They are really only focusing in parts of the south and in the east. Well, there, as we come to the end of the programme, we're going to come away and uh, we will monitor that and bring you anything uh, more significant in this news conference in the next little while. But before we close, I just want to turn to breaking news because reports from Afghanistan say a prominent Taliban cleric, Sheikh Rahimullah Haqqani, has been killed in a suicide bomb attack in Kabul. The attack took place in a religious seminary when a man detonated explosives apparently hidden in a prosthetic leg. It was not immediately clear who was behind the blast, a BBC correspondent in Kabul says Mr. Haqqani had previously survived two assassination attempts by Islamic State militants in Pakistan. So more on that in our global programme in half an hour's time and more on all of those headline stories here on BBC World News. See you in a bit. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Amrady Waller. On today's global, heat waves and drought intensify across large swathes of Europe with no let up in sight. Firefighters from across Europe offer help to France as it battles a so called zombie fire which has reignited near Bordeaux. Warnings over disruption to freight traffic in Germany as drought sees water levels continue to drop. We'll be speaking about the extreme weather conditions with the director of the UN Environment World Conservation Monitoring Center. Also on today's program, before and after a strike on Russia's airbase in Crimea, new images potentially show a big win for Ukraine. 
challenges of identifying soldiers killed in Ukraine. We report from a village that was deep inside the Russian-occupied territory. Now the locals, they're digging up the bodies of Russian soldiers who've been killed in the fighting. After they've been bagged, they'll be taken away for DNA sampling and eventually they'll be repatriated to Russia itself. And the freediver who's just done this, setting a new world record 120 metres down. Our old Gerard joins me live on the programme to tell me how he does it. Hello and welcome to BBC News. Heat waves, wildfires and drought are continuing to affect large parts of Europe. In the southwest of France, a thousand firefighters have been mobilised to battle a resurgent or so-called zombie fire that's burned thousands of hectares in just a couple of days. One firefighter called the blaze an ogre and a monster. Well, a number of European countries are sending firefighters and equipment to help. The fire reignited on Tuesday and has spread even more quickly than those that hit the area back in July. Authorities are warning that the parched conditions make it very dangerous as France experiences its worst drought in decades. That was Helena Wilkinson. Now, do stay with us because still to come on today's programme. One, two, three, four. Diving in the deep, we chat to the free diver who's just set a new world record 120 metres deep. It took 3 minutes 34 seconds with one breath. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Our main headlines here, heat waves and drought right across Europe with firefighters battling a monster fire near Bordeaux. Satellite images show extensive damage to a Russian airbase in occupied Crimea after it was hit by a series of explosions on Tuesday. Now. Hold your breath, this next story is pretty incredible. A French freediver has broken the world record for the deepest dive with bifins, going to a depth of 120 metres. The dive was done during the annual vertical blue competition in the Bahamas. Just have a look at this. I know we have run out of time, but it has been absolutely fascinating talking to you. You've broken the world record seven times. I'm sure there's a, an eighth being planned already. Thank you so much for talking to us here on BBC News. Uh, obviously, uh, lots of training that uh, is involved before somebody actually uh, attempts something like that. But fantastic uh, hearing him, how he actually pulled it off. I'm back with more of the day's stories here in just a moment or two. Don't go away. This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's global, heat waves and drought intensify across large swathes of Europe with no let up in sight. Firefighters from across Europe offer help to France as it battles a so called zombie fire which has reignited near Bordeaux. An extreme heat warning comes into force in parts of England and Wales. Warnings over disruption to freight traffic in Germany as drought sees water levels continue to drop. We'll hear the latest from our correspondents both in the UK and Portugal. Also on the programme, cash streaming in. Disney now has more subscribers than Netflix, but higher prices are on the way. Welcome back to BBC News and let's go back to our main story. The heat wave is continuing across many parts of Europe. One monster fire in France is being fought by more than a thousand firefighters. Drought too is causing many, many problems. Well, an amber heat warning for large parts of England and Wales has now come into force as temperatures look likely to peak at 37 Celsius over the next four days. The Met Office has also warned there's an exceptional risk of fires spreading in many places. Our correspondent Senesina Olude has this report. 
Alison Roberts. Now it is business time and Tiger's here to tell us more about Europe's drought and uh, how it is impacting trade and I suppose it's just a domino effect isn't it? Yeah that is absolutely right Matthew and there is a warning today that this worst drought that Europe has experienced in decades could also make the cost of living crisis even worse. The dry weather is not just harming food production, but also shipping, because one of the continent's most important transport routes, the River Rhine, is at dangerously low levels, restricting the transport of everything from food to fuel and car parts and adding to how much they cost the rest of us. Well, our business reporter, Victoria Craig, uh, joins us now from our business newsroom. Um, Victoria, how much of a headache has this become? It they used to call it channel hopping. Uh, there, we'll have to leave it. Michelle Fleury, thank you very much. Well, in other business today. The boss of Ryanair has told the BBC that the era of the 10 euro plane ticket is over. Michael O'Leary said the soaring cost of fuel would raise average fares on his budget airline from around 40 euros last year to roughly 50 euros over the next five years. But he says he believes people will continue to fly frequently despite the rising costs of living. McDonald's has announced plans to reopen restaurants in Ukraine, which closed after Russia's invasion in March. The fast food chain said it hoped the move would help restore a small but important sense of normalcy. There will be a phased reopening over the next few months in Kyiv and western Ukraine, areas that are deemed to be safe. And that is your business here on Global. Back to you now, Matthew. Tyke, thanks very much. Uh, more from you tomorrow. Now, uh, before we move on, let me just uh, show you the pictures coming into us from Lebanon, from Beirut, the live pictures, because in the last little while, a Lebanese man has given himself up. He had been uh, holding six people hostage at gunpoint inside a commercial bank uh, for around six hours. But he has uh, now given himself up. He's been taken away by the security forces. Uh, no hostages appear to have been harmed, according to the Lebanese Red Cross. Now, this had started uh, a while ago. He'd gone into the bank demanding access to his cash deposits that had been frozen by the bank. He had uh, said that he needed it to, to pay for hospital treatment for relatives, uh, then threatened to set himself on fire before actually taking hostages. Uh, those are the pictures from around and outside the bank and it was really interesting because uh, lots of people had uh, gathered there and actually supporting uh, uh, this man saying uh, and chanting down with the role of the banks we are all the same because so many people actually having their assets frozen in banks there in Lebanon. But uh, those are the pictures as that man has uh, given himself up after six hours. Now still to come on today's program. The British made equipment helping to save the lives of Ukraine's premature babies. That is next. Welcome back to today's Global on BBC World News. Our main headlines here, heat waves and droughts extend across large parts of Europe. Firefighters are battling a monster fire near Bordeaux. Satellite images show extensive damage to a Russian airbase in occupied Crimea after it was hit by a series of explosions on Tuesday. Now, since Russia invaded Ukraine, pregnant women there have been under extra pressure, especially when taking cover in shelters and basements. Doctors say premature births have been notably higher in regions where active military operations are conducted. We're getting the right support, be it warmer surroundings or breathing apparatus to babies born early, has been a huge, huge challenge, not least for international donors supplying British-made equipment, as Mark LaBelle has been finding out. So remember the shortlist out on Friday. Before we take a break, I just want to show you the pictures from southwest France because the aftermath of uh, some of those wildfires that are really proving so difficult to get under control, you can see what has been left behind uh, in the places where finally they've been put out. Uh, here on the programme, we'll be talking in the next little while to the Professor uh, Andreas Antonelli, who is uh, Professor of Biodiversity at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden, who says we are witnessing ecocides around the world. We're living in an age of extinction. So we'll ask him about those conclusions in our next edition of Global. We'll also get a special report from our weather department on the extreme weather we are seeing, where it is going and the impact that it is having. So. Uh, uh, all of that coming up in our next edition of Global, and that's here in the next few moments. Don't go away.
This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's Global, heat waves and drought intensify across large swathes of Europe with no let up in sight. Firefighters from across Europe offer help to France as it battles a so called zombie fire which has reignited near Bordeaux. Warnings over disruption to freight traffic in Germany as drought sees water levels continue to drop. We'll be speaking to the Director of Science at Kew Gardens about the impact of these extreme weather events. Also on today's programme, a hostage driver in Lebanon comes to an end as an armed man who demanded his frozen savings leaves the building after reaching a deal. Before and after a strike on Russia's airbase in Crimea, new images potentially show a big win for Ukraine. And hold your breath, we hear what it's like to free dive 120 metres into the deep from the new world record holder. The pressure is really high down because I have 11 uh, kilogram per centimetre square on my body. My lungs is the size of an orange. But at the end, I didn't feel any pain. Hello and welcome to BBC News. Heat waves, wildfires and drought are continuing to affect large parts of Europe in the southwest of France. A thousand firefighters have been mobilised to battle a resurgent or so-called zombie fire that's burned thousands of hectares in a couple of days. One firefighter called the blaze an ogre and a monster. Well, a number of European countries are sending firefighters and equipment to help. The fire reignited back on Tuesday and has spread even more quickly than those that hit the area in July. The authorities are warning that the parched conditions make it very dangerous as France experiences its worst drought in decades. Now to our other main stories, because satellite images show extensive damage to a Russian airbase in Crimea that was hit by a series of explosions on Tuesday. At least eight warplanes appear to have been destroyed. Ukraine has not officially acknowledged it was responsible for the explosions, but there is growing speculation over its involvement, given the attack was carried out more than 150 kilometers behind the front line. Russia has blamed the accident on an ammunition store and denied that any planes were destroyed. The first image shows what the airbase looked like before the explosions. The second shows that at least eight warplanes have been destroyed, though the base's main runways do seem to be intact. Well, in his nightly address, President Zelensky again said that Ukraine will recapture all of the territory lost to Russian forces, including the Crimean Peninsula. Now, still to come on today's programme. One, two, three. Diving in the deep, we hear from the free diver who's just set a new world record, 120 metres, one breath for thir three minutes, 34 seconds. Welcome back to Global here on BBC World News. Let's turn to our main headlines because heat waves and droughts right across Europe with firefighters battling a monster fire near Bordeaux in France. Now, a British man accused of being part of an Islamic State cell known as the Beatles because of their British accents has appeared in court charged with terror offences. Ayn Davis was held by counter-terrorism officers last night when he arrived in the UK at Luton Airport. He was deported from Turkey after spending more than six years in jail there. Well, our correspondent Helena Wilkinson was outside Westminster Magistrates Court in central London. We're going to take a break. Before we do, let me show you the latest pictures uh, from France. Those uh, wildfires, thousands of firefighters uh, battling uh, what is happening in the southwest of the country. The zombie fire, it's called, because, of course, it reignited uh, after uh, dying down. Well, firefighters have been just updating uh, the media in the last little while. So in our next edition, we'll bring you the latest from France and the rest of Europe as they battle with these wildfires, the drought and the heatwave.
This is BBC World News. I'm Matthew Emery Waller. On today's global heat waves and drought intensify across large swathes of Europe with no let up in sight. Firefighters from across Europe offer help to France as wildfires continue to ravage the southwest of the country. Warnings over disruption to freight traffic in Germany as drought sees water levels continue to drop. We'll be speaking to the Director of Science at Kew Gardens about the impact of those extreme weather conditions. Also on today's programme. A hostage drama in Lebanon comes to an end as an armed man who demanded his frozen savings leaves the bank after reaching a deal. Before and after a strike on Russia's airbase in Crimea, new images potentially show a big win for Ukraine. And hold your breath, we hear what it's like to free dive 120 metres into the deep from the new world record holder. The pressure is really high down because I have 11 uh, kilogram per centimetre square on my body. My lungs is the size of an orange, but at the end I didn't feel any pain. Hello and welcome to BBC News. Heat waves, wildfires and drought are continuing to affect large parts of Europe. In the southwest of France, a thousand firefighters have been mobilised to battle a resurgent or so-called zombie fire that's burned thousands of hectares in a couple of days. One firefighter called the blaze an ogre and a monster. Professor, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on the programme. Now to the Lebanon because an armed man who taken a number of people hostage at a bank in Beirut has been arrested after a tense standoff with all the hostages released and no one reported to have been injured. The man had been demanding access to his cash deposits which had been frozen by the bank. Well, Karine Torbe from BBC Arabic told me a little more from the scene. Now, still to come on today's programme. One, two, three, four. Diving in the deep, we hear from the free diver who's just set a new world record, 120 metres, one breath for three minutes, 34 seconds. Welcome back to today's Global on BBC World News. Our main headlines, heat waves and droughts across Europe with firefighters battling a monster fire near Bordeaux in France. And satellite images show extensive damage to a Russian airbase in occupied Crimea after it was hit by a series of explosions on Tuesday. Now, a British man accused of being part of an Islamic State cell known as the Beatles because of their British accents has appeared in court charged with terror offences. Justin, uh, thanks very much for taking us through that. Uh, what we've been seeing both in Europe and other parts of the world and uh, the consequences and perhaps uh, what we have to uh, do about it. Uh, we're coming towards uh, the end of today's global. Uh, just before we go, uh, it is worth uh, turning to reports that are coming in uh, from several sources of two roller coaster trains that have crashed into each other at the Legoland amusement park in Bavaria in southern Germany. Now, uh, local media suggest that at least 34 people have been injured, two apparently severely. So uh, those reports uh, have been emerging over the last uh, 60 minutes. Uh, we will keep an eye on that and bring you more, but uh, the report suggests at least 34 people injured after two roller coaster trains uh, crashing into each other at Legoland in southern Germany. But that brings us to the end of today's Global. Thanks so much for watching. And next up, it's time for Focus on Africa. See you next time. Bye bye. Hello there. Heatwave is the big story across the north and the west of the European.